Okay, so when we're under the hood, we're going to open up the cap right here. Set that aside. Now let's get underneath the vehicle and drain the coolant. So we're underneath the vehicle and you can see this front splash shield. There's three push clips that we're going to remove and then we're going to move along to these little bolts right here. They're just five and a half millimeter. So whatever you need to do to get these out, pull it down. They go back together just like that. Okay, so let's remove these five and a half millimeter bolts. We'll remove this. Awesome. All right. So we've got our catch bucket under here. That's going to catch any coolant. We want to make sure you recycle that. Use a 19 millimeter wrench or a ratchet. Loosen up the pet cock up here. Should start getting a little bit of coolant coming down. Let's let that fully drain out. Okay, let's close up this pet cock. Okay, so now we need to disconnect the wiring from right here. There's a little red tab, that's the lock tab. You need to disengage that. I use a pocket screwdriver, usually give it a pull. Then there's a squeeze tab. And that should come right off of there. Here's the red tab that I was talking about, and there's the squeeze. Hooky tool. We're just going to get this white holder off of there. Awesome. Open those. There's this clamp right here. It has an eight millimeter or a flathead. That's how you loosen it. You don't need to loosen it all the way, just enough to get it apart. On this, pull this out of here. Grab our air filter. that out of here. Make sure it's clean. Okay, this is ready to separate. We're going to take out these two eight millimeters right here. Both those are the same. Set these aside. At this point we should be able to wiggle this around. We're going to grab this box and it should just want to pop right up. Give it a nice tug. Draw this out of here. So next we're going to remove the wiring that goes to the fan assembly. We don't have to do this side. There's a little squeeze tab right where my thumb is or right where my finger is now. You just squeeze that and then draw this away. Take a peek. Looks great. Set it aside. All right, so follow this hose to where it connects to the radiator and remove the clamp. up and out of the way. All right, so if you try tugging on this wiring harness, you're going to notice it's down. Just get underneath the clips that hold it, pry it up. There we go. That moves around nicely. Move this out of the way. Okay, so we're going to locate the mounting bolts for the fan shroud. Eight millimeter, remove those. A little lower. Okay, so let's grab this engine cover. These right here hold it down. Just make sure they don't fly away. Lift up. Okay, so we're going to remove this 8 millimeter headed nut down here. stuck in the socket, but that's where it is. And now this can lift right up. Okay, so let's try working this up here. Awesome. Okay, so next 
we're going to take out these little plastic push clips and you can just unscrew them from the center with a Phillips head. You should want to lift up and we're just going to pull out the center just like that. Do the same all the way down the line. Nice. Remove these 10 millimeter headed bolts. Okay, so we need to disconnect our lights inside the bumper cover. Squeeze this tab. Do the same to the other side. Or should I take it? Remove this bolt and then the same bolts that go up along the um, wheel well. And now do the same to the other side. Pull away your wheel well cover, grab the plastic bumper, just give it a little tug. Should want to pop right off. Do the same to the other side. So let's remove this clamp. We're just going to slide it out of the way and draw the hose off. There we go. All right, let's get this hose off of here. So next, let's remove this 10 millimeter headed bolt that holds this bracket. Do the same to the other side. Okay, so now we can push the radiator and the condenser around a little bit, and that's gonna give us access to get to the next bolt we need to, which is behind here. Okay, so we can push this back. I'm gonna use my ratcheting wrench. Okay, there it is. And it looks like there's one on this side as well. So I'll get this one. There it is. Awesome. So if you look at this tab right here, and then you make your way to the inside of the cabin, engine compartment here, you can see this. That's that piece right there. Set that right there. Take this one off the same way. Okay, so now we're just gonna lift up on this. We're going to try to lift the radiator up and out of its spot down in the bottom. And that should give us a little bit of wiggle room to continue on to what we need to do next. Remove this bolt. Set that aside. So if you look at the back side of the radiator here, you're going to see this little hooky-do. We have the same thing on the front side of the radiator, um, and that's what's holding the condenser in. So what we're going to do now, we're going to pull the radiator away lift up on the condenser and just try to get it out of those hooks that are on the front. Okay, just get the condenser out of the radiator front hooky do there. That side's out. Same on this side. There it is. Awesome. I'm just gonna get the AC line out of the clip on the side of the radiator. There it is. You can see it right down here. Okay, at this point, we can move the radiator around. Let's see if we can lift it up out of here. Okay. Awesome. So we have our clip for our AC line. We're just gonna remove that from the old radiator. That's the side that had the dual hoses on it. Let's slide that clip right into the new radiator.
Okay, so we're going to take our new radiator and get it back installed. Want to be careful for all these fins, at least as much as possible here. There we go. This hose out of the way. Oh yeah, this is looking good. All right, before we get it all the way down into its spot, we're gonna try to get the AC condenser mounted up onto the little hooky-doos there in the front, right down here. So our radiator came with a nice bag full of these. And those just go right on like this. The bolts come from the front. So you wanna make sure you have the flat side facing towards the front and the, uh, the threaded side facing towards the rear of the vehicle. Let's do the same to the other side. Okay, let's lift up on the condenser. Just try to get it to slide into that little hook down there. Right here. Beautiful. Let's do the same to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to take my nice flat pry bar here. I'm going to come underneath the condenser and the radiator, and I'm going to lift very carefully. I don't want to crush any of this. And we can see my rubber right down in there. That's the mount, and that's just inside this radiator um, housing. So now I'm just going to try to draw that little piton into there. Looks like it's pretty close. Okay, I'm going to come over the other side. Try to get that one in. Looks like I'm hovering just over it. So at this point, we should be ready to start wanting to come down. Okay, so now we're just gonna line up this tab with the uh, area on the radiator, and we're gonna put in our bolt. You can see the holes lined up. Got my little bolt. I'm just gonna start it in, a few threads, and then I'll do the same to the other side. Let's tighten these up. We'll start with this one, and then I'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so we have our mount for the top of the radiator. Just gonna pull the radiator away, put that down over it, and then the other end should slide right through this slot right here. So get through. There we go. I'm gonna start in my bolt, and I'll do the same to the other side. Okay, snug them up. Let's resecure this before we forget. If any of your radiator hose clamps look like this, all rusted and rotted, you might want to replace them. They could be weak. Just remove that. We'll use a regular hose clamp. So we get a nice new clamp on there. Back on where it belongs. And snug it up. It's always a good idea to use a socket on these type of clamps to make sure that they're tight. A regular screwdriver just won't do it. All right, let's grab our lower hose. Squeeze that clamp. Okay. Make sure the clamp's right where it came from. Give this a wiggle. Feels pretty great. So here's the area on the fan shroud that's going to go into the hooky doos on the radiator. So pay attention to these and line this area up with the bolt holes up along the top. Slide in here. Okay. Make sure you have all your wiring up and out of the way. Let's make sure we get this down into the little hooks. 
There we go. That fit in nicely. Let's do the same to the other side. Okay, so let's get these bolts installed here. Okay, now that those are in, let's snug them up. Let's do the same the other side. All right, let's get this connected. Let's grab our upper hose, goes right under in between here, just like that, and down in here, push it all the way onto the radiator, and now we're going to make sure we get our clamp on there. There we go, make sure that's lined up with everything, beautiful. We have the lower portion of our air filter box here. You've got our little pitons. They're gonna go into the rubbers down here. That's what's gonna hold it in. Turn this. These holes are gonna line up. Should wanna work its way down. Okay, push it right down in, give it a tug. If it doesn't come back up, you're probably doing all right. Okay, so now we're gonna get our bolts in to hold this. Tighten them up. Let's get our air filter back in here. Make sure it's all the way in. Get our cover. Slide that in as well. Come on. Should want to slide over. There we go. Clip it in. You have your red locking tab. Once you slide this in, you have to squeeze that tab. This is your mass airflow sensor. We're gonna tighten up this clamp with our eight millimeter. Beautiful. Okay, so now it's time to fill the coolant. Right here is where you would do it. If you have a tool like this, this is the best way to fill a cooling system. Put it on just like this. We're going to create vacuum. Watch this needle go all the way up into the green. Once it does that and it holds for a minute, we'll close it off and we're going to test to see if we have any leaks. Here we go. Let me just make sure I have this so it's not going to fly around. Okay, so we let this sit for a good half an hour. As you can tell, it's still held pressure. We're doing all right. I've got my coolant jug set up with my manufacturer specified coolant. I'm gonna let it fill up. We can see the level coming up here. All right, that's the end of that. So if you look at the bottom of the engine cover, you're going to see you have a little peat down here and one right there. Those are going to line up with these holes right down here. Back up at the cover, you're also going to see this hole right here. And that's going to line up with this stud down here. Let's get this back on here. Those are lined up perfect. I've got my hole through this right here. I'm going to put on my nut. Okay, if you look right down here, we've got our nut started on there. Let's tighten it up with our eight millimeter. Okay, so make sure you grab your two bumper cover bolts that go right here. We've got our bumper cover. We're gonna carefully lift it up, try not to scratch anything. Should slide right up on here. Start bolt these bolts in. I'm gonna come along the side right here. Pull this down and away. Lift up on the bumper cover. That lined up. This looks great. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. We've got our three bolts for our inside wheel well. 
Let's install those. Do the same to the other side of the vehicle. Okay, so let's get our lights plugged back in. Do the same to the other side. Okay, so let's get this bolt attached right here in the corner. And the same on the other side, assuming yours has one. Okay, so let's get this back onto the vehicle. Line it up like this. I'm just gonna put in my push clips first, that'll hold it for me. That goes up there. go. All right, so let's get some screws in. Beautiful. So the coolant level is nice and high. Now we're going to start the vehicle and let it run. Okay, so we got this running. What we want to do is we want to pay attention to the level. You want to make sure that it doesn't drop all the way down so you're going to be sucking air back into the system. So pay attention right here. You also want to pay attention to the temperature on the inside of the vehicle to make sure that that engine temperature level isn't going up into the red. While paying attention to all that, you also want to be listening for your cooling fans to turn on. You need to keep running it like this before you take it for a ride and wait for those cooling fans to turn on. Okay, so we're going to tighten these up. We know those are tight. Let's put in our little push tabs. All the way down the line here. Okay, so our cooling fans turned on. Looks like we're doing all right. 